Hey, what's up, ecosystem? Welcome back to Auto Transport Intel. You know, I share a lot of information on industry news on Tuesday nights live. Companies, trends, statistics, for example. Well, last year I got to meet Paul Machine of Blackbook. You know, vehicles, VINs, trends, statistics. Well, we're friends now. He's got new information and he's here tonight. So when I saw Mike Buchanan of ARI making videos on LinkedIn talking about Black Book, I thought, well, we got to be friends too. So now Mike of ARI is here tonight. Plus, Paul introduced me to Josh, Mike introduced me to Peter, and now we've got an information party. ARI, a Holman Enterprise company, helps businesses manage their vehicle fleets. From lawnmowers to front-end loaders, fleet management companies provide a multitude of services to a vast number of industry verticals. And can you imagine being their auto transportation provider? Talk about busy. Well, we've got a lot to talk about tonight, and we're going to learn a lot together. So please join the live chat, ask your questions, share your thoughts, grow your business, because it's Tuesday Nights Live on Auto Transport Intel. I'm Jay, your host. Welcome back to the show. going on everybody welcome back to auto transport intel i am jay your host and it's tuesday nights live and we're back yes we're back in the zone on a tuesday night and i really appreciate you guys taking the time in your busy schedules to join me live on youtube for tuesday nights live listen if this is your first time here i really want you to feel welcome Please do feel welcome on Auto Transport Intel. This is an open forum. Carriers, drivers, dealers, auctions, OEMs, brokers, dispatchers, technology, insurance, equipment, services, loads, DOT. Welcome if you're DOT. Please do say hello in the live chat, uh, regardless of your vertical. And um, yeah, please do say hello. Mention your company, uh, mention your product, service ask a question, make a friend, and grow your network, and stick around. Be sure to join us for industry news at the quarter hour. That's national news, social media news, front of the store, back of the store, what's being talked about, auto transport tech, car shipping trends, vehicle logistics news. We're going to do all that. We spend a long time. And then, at 40 minutes into the show, I'm going to bring in Peter Nogallo. He is ARI Marketing Manager. He's going to give us an overview of Holman Enterprise. ARI, an overview. It's going to be great. Lots of inf interesting information there. And when uh, the time is right at an hour in, we're going to bring in Josh Giles. He is works in vehicle valuations. And Paul Machine, Director of Strategic Accounts, both from Black Book. And they're going to give a presentation. We're going to talk about trucks tonight. So that's going to be a great presentation. And then uh, 20 minutes after the hour, we're going to bring in Mike Buchanan. Um, uh, he's a remarketing expert at ARI. 
And um, this is the show. Listen, if you've got questions about fleet management companies, what do they do? What all do they do? What do they manage? What do they consult? Etc. Uh, this is the show. In fact, I don't think there's ever been a live show on YouTube connecting fleet management companies with auto transport before. So I'm really excited uh, to bring that to you. This is going to be a great show. Also, do me a favor. You see that button. First of all, hit that like button. Please do that. I really appreciate it. And you also see that share button. Here's your opportunity to help me out. Click the share, which then you click the copy. You grab the link. Text it. Email it. Share it on social media. Let people know they're going to be live for another two hours. You've got plenty of time to join the show, learn about fleet management companies, all that they do, and, uh, and there's a lot to learn. And in fact, if you have deep questions about starting up your business, growing your business, sign up at autotransportintel.com. You know if you do that, um, if you if you missed it last week, we did the uh, Cars on the Move roundtable. You might be able to join us for the next one. I think there's still some seats. Ty is in the live chat. He can help you with that, talk to you about it. So anyways, do me a favor, stick around. We're going to go into the live chat. I want to talk to you soon. Are you completely stressed out from all the calls and the contracts and the verification of loads when nobody answers the phone? Call Murphy Auto Dispatch Services today. Murphy Auto Dispatch Services has over 15 years of experience in the transport industry. We are your office while you are on the road. We book, we verify out your loads for you. We have an excellent accounting staff and an even better dispatch team. Give us a call today at 417-273-273. 0021 or if you want to email me it's murphy auto transport 31 at yahoo.com give us a call today okay that is the voice of sue by the way we okay everybody hanging on to their seats and their steering wheels because i think we're back all right, so cool. So that's the voice of Sue, and she runs a dispatch office. That's Murphy Auto Transport Services. You can find the link in the live chat. Um, also, Sue's my co-host every Thursday at noon on Dispatching Live. She's a fully licensed broker, and she wants to help you. So if you're a carrier looking for a dispatcher, or you just want to know what is dispatching, what's it all about? Well, tune in Thursdays on Dispatching Live, or again, you can. there's the email address, there's the phone number in the live chat. Ask Sue. By the way, can you see me and hear me okay? Mic check. One, two. I think we're good. So let's go into the live chat. Now, I want to do this too. As we move into the live chat, we had some super chats were off the hook last week, and I really appreciate that. Uh, if there's any way we can uh, we can revisit that, great. By the way, I've got my all my dispatching live prompts up here. If you watch dispatching live, you might know... What is that? I don't know. What is that? So I've got my props, and if you if you put in a super chat, let me know which prop you want me to use. Also, be sure to put in your company information. Let's share a URL because I want to give you a proper shout out. I really do. So let's go into the live chat, and you know I gotta back it up. Um, so let me do that. I'm scrolling up, but I'll be you're seeing the actual live chat live on the screen right now. Silverman was in here first with Italian. Uh, he said, and I can't speak Italian, so I'll say it in English. You have the best auto shipping business channel on YouTube. Thank you so much, Silverman. I so appreciate that. Titanium Transport is in here with us. What's up, Titanium Transport? Thank you for saying hello. Ty Thompson is here with us. This is where I get my car hauling shipping news. Yes, man. Yes. Thank you so much for being in the live chat and helping anybody. Again, if you have a question and you want to sign up at Auto Transport Intel, you can talk to Ty. He's in the live chat. Andrew Serka, he's going to be with us again on the round table. What's going on, Andrew, at Secure Motor Transport? Thanks for tuning in. If you're looking for car shipping advice from load boards, brokers, dispatchers, carriers, CRM systems, advice, this is the only channel for that. It's a true statement. It is a true statement. So thank you so much for that. I really do appreciate that. Silverman, we appreciate you, buddy. Joel Hawk is here. What's up, Joel? Thanks for tuning in and saying hello. We're connected on LinkedIn. Oh, where, where did everything go? What was that, Jay? 
You're already hitting you're already hitting wrong buttons. We got a long show, Jay, for hitting wrong buttons. Carlos Braxton, ACB Logistics is here. What's going on? Oh, Kimberly. Kimberly's in the live chat. What's going on, Kimberly? Thanks for helping out. Uh, I am the host of the show, and uh, and it's a tight crew. We run a tight ship, and so and we, we appreciate you so much. And Paul Machine is in the live chat. What's up, Paul? Oh, dude, thanks for being a part of the show tonight. Really appreciate it. Silverman, Andrew, Mike Buchanan is here. What's up, Mike? Mike with ARI in the live chat saying hello. Um, and Paul Meyer, the white tablecloth. Yeah, you got to check out Paul's show on Sunday nights. He's live on YouTube and LinkedIn. Good call with that, Paul. Oh, I did it again. See, I hit the Zoom. Ah, I know what I did. I hit the Zoom button. I got it. I got many buttons over here that I got to push, and uh, and I really, really do that. I go live four times a week. You'd think I had it down by now. All right, there we go. There's the right button. Jake McLeod is here. What's up, Jake? Jake is in the live chat. What's going on? And uh, we got Titanium and Paul and Paul and Paul. And Gerard is here. What's up, Gerard? Thanks so much for tuning in saying hello. And, you know, I understand um, every Tuesday night, the other shows are a bit more predictable, right? DOT compliance. What else are we going to talk about? Dispatching live, cars on the move. Tuesday nights live, I really mix it up. But I tell you, it's such a vast industry ecosystem, and the verticals have been so fragmented for so long. So you know, I'm chipping away at the layers of the ice age, and you know, if I if I if I confuse you or 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 mix it up, you know, too aggressively, you know, I apologize in advance. There's so much work to do. So so thank you. Danny B is here. What's up, Danny B? Thanks for saying hello, Danny B. And uh, let's see, who else we got? Oh, Mark Grodeke, Superflow Systems is here. What's up, Mark? Thanks for saying hello. ARI is blowing the lid off. You know, I want to say thank you again, ARI, for taking the time and participating in a live show. I'm telling you, it's super cool. It, it, is, it is a special treat, and I, and, I, and I love it. We see you and we hear you. Thank you so much. All right, that is super cool. And uh, let's see, Gerard, question, does Sue have anything for a 26-foot box truck? Gerard, I love it, buddy. Uh, do me a favor, Gerard, will you tune in on Thursday at noon on Dispatching Live? Every every Thursday at noon Central Time on Dispatching Live. And um, But I think, there's a, uh, I think there's a freight. You might need a freight dispatcher. Let's see. Catherine Guerrero, Futuro GT Logistics is here. What's up, Catherine? Thanks for tuning in. This is going to be, you know, Catherine, this is going to be a very informative show. Um, there is a lot of new information, stuff we haven't even covered anywhere. Josh Giles is with us. What's up? Hey, everyone. I'm excited to join the show tonight. Glad to have you on, Josh. This is going to be awesome. And then there it is, man. Look at that. Ty ringing the bell. No more props, just haul more cars. Thank you, Ty. You know, Ty is the lead coach on uh, Cars on the Move, Auto Transport Intel. And we're going to do another live roundtable on February 2nd. It's the Groundhogs Car Hauling Roundtable. And Ty is your lead coach. So if you want it, you want to be a part of that show, talk to Ty. In fact, here, I'm going to give you... Here we go, Ty. You know how I like to... I like to honk my own horn here on Auto Transport Intel. Well, there we go. There's one of the props that I use on Dispatching Live. I know it's over the top. It's as if anything else has been normal. So, you know, why not? Anything happened on Tuesday. See, there it is. Jake's got it. Thank you so much, Ty, for your contribution. That is super cool, buddy. I appreciate it. Um, ARI is great people. Yeah, a lot of ARI fans out there. And we've got ARI fans here tonight. And, um, okay, industry news is going to be really long, so I just need to get right to it. So i tell you what, stick around. We're going into industry news. It's going to be right after this. Superflow Systems is excited to introduce DispatchCenter.com a full-service load board for brokers, shippers, carriers, and drivers, featuring integrations with Truckify mobile app and iTruckPay. Use Route Scout technology to build your routes. Maximize truck capacity. Stay loaded at the highest available revenue with the least amount of driving miles. 
Tell us your lanes. Loadification will alert you to new loads posting in your route. Views instant load notifications sent with BookNow features. Search and book loads directly through the Truckify mobile app. Brokers and shippers post your loads to dispatch center. Give authorized carriers the opportunity to instantly book your loads. Dispatch center powers the Truckify mobile app, allowing instant load assignment to the driver. Truckify will send inspection reports, geolocated pickup and delivery photos, BOLs, and invoices back to the broker. Brokers, shippers, carriers, and drivers, Dispatch Center, and Truckify have what you need to be more profitable every day. Superflow Systems, superflowsystems.com. The link is in the live chat. Mark is in the live chat. It's end-to-end -end auto transport software from CRM, from your lead, from getting your quote, right, all the way into load board, mobile app, and getting paid end-to-end. -end. Any questions about that, Mark is in the live chat. Be happy to connect you. And, um, yeah, there's a lot to talk about. So, Mark, thank you so much. Thank you and Superflow Systems. And here we go. Industry news, okay, uh, tonight is episode 173 on a Tuesday night in a row. See, I told you. That's why. That's why. Okay. Uh, so, ARI Fleet Management is the topic tonight, and that's who we're having on. We got ARI and Black Book in the same room, and this is what I was talking about in, in kind of the intro. Mike is active on LinkedIn, uh, helping provide market updates, talk about remarketing of ARI, equipment, direct virtual auctions, black book reports, etc. So there's Mike doing awesome social media marketing and he's he's here with us tonight. So okay, what what is a fleet management service? What does that do? Okay, fleet management allows companies which rely on transportation in their business to uh, get better efficiency, productivity, overall transportation, cost, staff, compliance, etc. The company that helps manage all that is a fleet management company, fleet management service. So that's what we're talking about tonight. And look at look at these verticals, right? Oil and gas, government, telecom, sales, manufacturing, agriculture, energy, utility, railroad. Think about it, right? Because you got all these different verticals of businesses and their core function has nothing to do with automotive, but they need vehicles to do business. Fleet management company, that's what you do, is you hire a company to manage your fleet and make smart decisions. You know, we talk about the entire auto transport industry ecosystem tonight. Okay, so equipment to the shippers, services. We'll see if, we'll, we'll ask Mike and Peter if I'm close on this one. So they're going to help teach me, right? I, I'm in this too. From back of the store to front of the store, auto transport intel, we go back, we go back and forth. It is 2021, the year of the hybrid. I'm hearing the word hybrid all over the place. And I made this graphic in December because I could tell what was happening. You can see what's happening. You know, last week we had Cars on the Move Roundtable where we featured, we, we had over a dozen carriers on one Zoom meeting live at the same time. So in, in in fact on February 2nd we're going to we're going to I want to double that. I want to double I want to go to Groundhog's Car Hauling Roundtable and if you want to join us put it in the live chat talk to Ty. And you don't have to be like a new carrier. You could be any version of any auto transport business you want. That's what this roundtable is all about. Again, Auto Transport Intel open platform. So get in on it. You know, last week, or the week before that, we had Midwestern on the show. Midwestern Car Carriers is an auto transport fleet. We had a good time talking to them. And they're, they're friends. Ty knows these guys. They're in Kansas City. Um, now I know them better, too. And now you know them better, too, because they were live on Auto Transport Intel. I was watching this today, navigating the driver shortage. You know, you talk to any auto transport fleet, what do they need? drivers they need drivers now why is there a driver shortage on this uh this was today and now I'm, i got connected to jeremy today on linkedin too because this is great information the latest economic report uh role obviously the pandemic played a role but you know what the drug and alcohol clearinghouse database that thing is having an impact is it good eh, i guess 
you know, but uh, but we have a we have a driver shortage problem. And so I was watching YouTube on my phone and I, I saw a U-ship ad and it said, okay, how U-ship works for hotshot truckers with pickups and vans. I thought, really? That's interesting. I thought I knew everything there is to know, but you know, I've got an open mind. Is there more? Could there be more? Go to uship.com forward slash learn forward slash carriers. So I did it. All right. I went there and really, you know what? I was disappointed. I didn't know where to learn anything. I could become a carrier, but I already knew that. So I don't know. Maybe I'm missing something. I'm just pointing it out. But, uh, you know, you want to have a company, you want to have a client like Vroom, like nationwide, right? Never go to the dealership kind of client. You're going to want to watch Auto Transport Intel. You're also going to want a network, right? Like Automotive Logistics on Auto Transport Intel. That is Christopher Ludwig in London. He joined us last Friday on Cars on the Move. That was awesome. And we were promoting Automotive Logistics and Supply Chain North America Live. Um, I've got a code. I do have a code. Here, I'll tell you what. Yep, there it is. Uh, you go here. You take this code and you punch it into the live chat. And you see it in the live chat. If you click on that link in the live chat, you can get 30% off to join that two-day Automotive Logistics and Supply Chain North America Live and network and learn it's awesome stuff. Now, Car Lots. Are you familiar with what Car Lots is doing? Car Lots is connecting consigners from their driveway. People that want to sell their used vehicles, network and buy and sell from their driveway, Car Lots. Do you, do you realize that? Do you know how that's different from Carvana Access? Right? Wholesale to wholesale. And these are large companies. These are large contracts. Can you imagine working with some of these companies to help them move their vehicles? That's what we're looking for. Um, digital is the destination for Mannheim. Did you see this one? That they're saying, here we go. Selling all vehicles digitally is the ultimate goal uh, for Mannheim, says the president, Grace Wong. It's really an aspiration. We don't have a fixed date, she says. It's an aspiration. We don't have a fixed date. Interesting. Really? That's really interesting. Okay. Um, Deloitte, how do consumers intend to acquire their next vehicle in the United States in person? Wait a minute. I thought everything was going digital. You mean over 70% of the people still want to get their vehicle in person? That's interesting. What do we do with all this data, Jay? What do consumers think about electric vehicle technology? Uh, in the United States, 70% still want a gas car. Really? That's interesting. Seems to be a lot going on with EV. Also, here's another different one. Uh, lounges allow international buyers to bid on Copart vehicles. Now, I've heard of Copart, but you're now talking about Auto Bid Master? Auto Bid Master. You can buy clean and salvage cars 100% online from auctions, and this is how you can buy internationally. Boy, he's really jumping around tonight. GM explains, expands plug-in push to delivery vans, ultra-luxury cars. Okay, that's different. Biden administration pushing EVs. My point is, there is so much to know. Why not just rapid-fire this knowledge on Tuesday nights live on Industry News? Do it. Um, okay, so wait. So wait, I thought people still wanted to buy in person and they wanted gas cars. We're going to push for EVs and high-speed rail. By the way, if we're pushing for high-speed rail and there's we still are in the pandemic, and I'm not this is not a political question. It's just a it's a logistics question. I just have a lot of questions logistically. In fact, did you see this? Augmented reality could be big in 2024. Okay, here's a screen, right? So so you, I guess through your windshield, you're getting digital graphics. You can't watch movies, but you will get digital graphics. Hey, what could what could those what could that stuff be if you're an auto transporter? What if the graphics could help you find your car at the Mannheim or know that you're not going to make that bridge? Hey, hey auto transporter, you know what? With that it, because you didn't use your height stick, you're gonna 
your truck is going to hit that bridge. So you might you might want to turn right now. I'm just saying. It's just a thing. Hey, this is how you get your car shipping news. We do that on Auto Transport Intel on Tuesday nights live. We jump all over the place. By the way, did you know that GM, JMN, GMN, JMN Logistics announced a new website launch today. Better design, better interface, responsive to all media platforms. The new site continues JMN commitment to growth in 2021. That could be you. It could be your information. Put it in the live chat. Send me an email, autotransportintel at gmail.com, and you can make the car shipping news. We'll put it up on the big screen. You can definitely do that. Cast it or, or relay it. What are the, what's the technology term? Speaking of, hey, Jay, I've been watching a lot of your videos. I'm into dispatching on the reefer and flatbed side. I used to be a car hauler. I'm stuck on how to subscribe to Central Dispatch to give my hot shots some cars. The only option I see is carrier, broker, dealer. Can you point me in the right direction? You're darn right I can. On Thursday. No, I'm just kidding, man. Do join, join me on Thursday on Dispatching Live. Um, that was a YouTube comment or... What you can do, go ahead and sign up as an ATI Insider. Go to autotransportintel.com. Sign up as an ATI Insider. You know, malware is targeting trucking companies. It isn't just an IT issue, but it will definitely send you to the ELD punch. It was a squirrely one tonight, and we're only halfway through this thing. All right, hang on. I'm going to be right back. Even with all the tools at our disposal, there is still about 48 million empty miles in our network. Empty miles happen when driver Bob makes his delivery and returns home without freight. After all, there aren't cars just waiting for delivery on every corner. But there is non-automotive freight, and our network is already active around the country. So what if Bob could leverage his trailer to deliver something other than cars? We searched high and low to find a way to do this within regulations, and we found it. We can do this now with current equipment, and we're working on innovative new trailers that will deliver even more cars and more freight. This is a total game changer, and here's the math. We're already paying the cost of those 48 million empty miles, and with no revenue to show for it. We can make $1.50 to $2.50 in revenue per mile with dry freight. Since dry freight is not as specialized as automotive, backhauls can be found without adding miles to Bob's trip. This means Jack Cooper will make even more profit, and our drivers will make even more money. It also means fewer miles in America's delivery network and lower carbon emissions for the country. Call it a win-win-win-win for driver Bob, for Jack Cooper, for America, and for our investors. We're Jack Cooper, driving innovation for the 21st century. So what you can do is you can go to jackcooper.com forward slash careers. They're hiring auto transporters, yard managers, dispatch at the terminals, etc. So thank you, Jack Cooper, for that. Really do appreciate the information. You know, I saw in the live chat, it's a funny thing. Um... When I, I mentioned politics there a few minutes ago, yeah, we don't do politics, we don't do weather, we don't do what, you know, where you went fishing, all that stuff. We leave all that stuff out. We don't do live calls and all that. And I don't talk about politics. I saw that article and I thought, you know, that's interesting. EVs and high speed rail, um, it doesn't reflect some of the current trends, but maybe it can, reflects future trends. And, you know, you guys probably know this already anyways. When it comes to politics, I drive right down the center of the highway. I mean, right down the center. So, um, let's go back into industry news, by the way. Hopefully you're enjoying your ELD punch. Ford confirms a delay of hundreds of 2021 Mustang Mach-E deliveries for quality review. Uh, deliveries of the 2021 Ford Mustang Mach-E will be delayed for hundreds of customers that's not what I found so interesting. What I found so interesting was what the people said. Um, okay, now I gotta say this. Okay, the vehicle, here's why it was delayed. The vehicle is assembled in Mexico, available through pre-order only, not sold off dealer lots. A few Mach-E SUVs were delivered as scheduled in December. Um, the delay could be as long as eight weeks, hopefully less. This is not tied to the industry's semiconductor shortage, which apparently appears to be a real problem we're going to keep seeing about the semiconductor shortage but here's the thing okay here's so if you're a transporter right 
I think we gotta we gotta realize how vocal people are about when stuff isn't there on time. All right, this guy says, where's the explanation of why my Maki went from estimated delivery of January to March? Ridiculous, I've been I've been a minute one order since November, a lot, November 2019, oh my gosh. Lack of communication from Ford is nothing but disappointing. Where's the transparency? Oh, but wait, there's more. Uh, Maki fan tweeted, how about delivery to other customers? I got an email today from Ford letting me know my MME first edition will be delayed a month. This is after I was notified it already had been built and shipped. What's the story, Ford? Lots of folks got the same email today. I mean, there's a video and everything. And there's more. Another buyer wrote, seems like everyone is receiving this email. I want to throw up right now. I want to throw up right now. Man, people love their cars. Um, let's see. I'm not particularly jazzed by this delay. My Maki is already on a train car, according to my dealer. My email said end of March. Something's up. Can't be transit related. We know Maki's are on the move. There's no way it takes two months for Kansas City Southern to find a locomotive to hitch to the rail car that has my Maki already strapped down inside of it. Well, at least, you know, uh, they got somewhat of a sense of humor. Gonna need that. There's more. Um, let's see here. Oh, okay. Now this is just other vehicle delays. Latest news involving Maki. Now the 2021 Bronco delivery has been pushed from spring to summer because of supply chain disruptions. I guess get ready for the social media, uh, dust up. But yes, the semiconductor shortage has come for the auto industry. You're seeing this everywhere. What are they talking about? It's an industry issue. It's not related to COVID. And apparently, I guess, uh, I guess because everybody needed the P, the, I guess they needed the semiconductors for the PS5s, and they, I don't know, I don't know how, <laughs> who messed up the order on this one, really? Um, I just want to say this though, man. Listen, Mark Grodicky. In fact, here you go, here you go, Mark. Thank you so much, Mark Grodicky. Superflow Systems helping the cause. Really do appreciate. It. Thanks for that contribution. Um, it means a lot, buddy. Thanks for participating in the channel. That is Mark at Superflow Systems. He's in the live chat. If you've got any software question, how about a software request, right? Maybe you're trying to, maybe you're trying to get that load, get that dispatch, get that notification, get that auto quote. I don't know what to get your money. I don't know what your question is, but Mark is in the live chat. He wants to help you. And back to the news. Ford cuts its losses in Brazil with the closure of all production. No more, no more Ford production in Brazil. Next. Uh, Archer Fiat Chrysler Automobiles partner to build Evoto flying taxis. Next. GM reveals a flying car. I can't even tell that's a car. <laughs> Next. Uh, oh, that's it. That, okay, wait. So that's the car. That's the... I still don't get it. I still don't know. Uh, General Motors reveals its new logo. How's the new logo treating you? General Motors will bring 30 new EVs to the market in five years, even though 70% of the people want gas. Tell me all about it. Buick, Cadillac, Chevy, GMC. I don't know, man. There's EVs everywhere. Even, even Kia. Kia's got a new logo. Did you see the new logo? Like KN? I don't know. Um, seven new EVs to launch by 2027. New logo, new slogan, new brand strategy. Kia. Mercedes-Benz EQA electric crossover will debut in January 20th. Everybody's doing it. Tesla starts delivering the China-made Model Y crossover. Um, and not to be undone, Chinese electric vehicle startup NEO is partnering, pioneering battery swap systems. Yeah, see, it's the battery. It's all about the battery, yo. Right? It's all about the... Somebody call Snoop. Okay, BMW ends its car subscription program. Have you seen this? Canceling its subscription service that began in 2018 in Nashville. Now, I'm not saying, you know, anything negative. I'm just reporting the news, but it is interesting. Here, this is interesting. The subscription service costs more than two grand a month. That was just for the base. Um, if we have to think the high price was part of the reason the service didn't work. Yeah, you think? 
the service called Access by BMW never shared subscriber numbers, so we don't know how many people subscribed or unsubscribed. But if you wanted the next level, it was 3700 a month. Wow. Wow. I'm still, wow, 3700 a month. Wow. Mainstream automakers, including Ford, also tried a subscription service, but Ford sold its service in 2019. Audi announced earlier it was ending its subscription service, so subscriptions are out. Next. Uh, Samsung partners with Audi, BMW, Ford, and Genesis to turn your phone into a car key. Have you seen this? Yeah. Yeah, remember, wait, what? didn't we see that notice about hackers or so? Anyways. Yeah, no, no worries. Those digital car keys should work with Apple iPhones and across Android brands, too. Why not? Hey, BMW announces Digital Key Plus for use with its iPhone on an all-electric car. <laughs> Won't be any hacking problems there. Cars.com reveals top auto trends. Okay, there's a new wave of car buyers emerging. Okay, the drive will be driveway will become the dealer lot. Virtual selling streamlines car buying. Affordability at the forefront for consumers. Advancement in EVs with federal support and evolved technology. Those are your top five auto trends. True Car predicts 16 million sales in 2021. True Car is definitely in the game. 16 million new light vehicle sales. An increase of 10% from last year. That is very significant. 10% is a big change year over year. Uh, let's see, Carbly, I had to get this in here, Carbly, through a new partnership between Ambient Automotive and Auction Edge to integrate Edge Pipeline Auction Run List, Carbly is another technology, so you're going to see Carbly coming up. Um, don't forget to tune in every Wednesday, that would be tomorrow, Wednesday for DOT Compliance, that's at noon every Wednesday. In fact, tomorrow I think we're going to answer... We had a question a carrier asked in the YouTube live uh, comments. He's a solo landscaper owner operator, and he has a question about uh, compliance and his drivers. We're going to talk about that. Every Thursday at noon, we do load board search advice on Thursdays at noon. For example, here's a good question that came in. Uh, okay, if a dispatcher lands a load for a carrier and that becomes a dedicated lane, does the carrier have to pay the dispatcher in perpetuity? Here's what I said. Probably not. But what would Jesus do? Okay. See, I told you I drive right down the middle of the road. That's crazy. But I mean, you know, you're not obligated, but you know, you might want to make a deal and make, you know, it's a team, right? It's a team effort. Cars on the move every Friday at noon, dealers, auctions, and carriers. Now we got something cool. This Friday, we're going to have truck, tractor, trailer live on cars on the move. And in two weeks, we're gonna we're gonna debut the melting block of ice with Tim Scatellis on cars on the move, dealers, auctions, carriers. Max Digital will be the last Friday of every month moving forward. That's gonna be awesome. Really looking forward to that. In fact, here's a teaser: drive sweet spot sales. This is from Tim's uh, slide deck. Oh, you've had enough. Next, uh, and then we're gonna do. Anybody else? Uh, man, that is a lot. Whoa, it's crazy. Did you see that? Bang. Wow, that's a lot. <clears throat> Ty says. Okay, but seriously, folks, um, we are going to have, let's see, next Tuesday night is on demand Draver delivery with Anthony Montero, CEO of Draver. That is going to be an awesome show. We're talking about home delivery, fixed stop, pickup and delivery, uh, test drives, right? concierge in two weeks we're gonna do groundhogs car hauling roundtable you want to get in on that ties in the live chat he'd be happy to get you signed up in three weeks we've got carketa vehicle reconditioning more software and you know what's really cool about carketa vehicle reconditioning software step one where's your transport right you're bringing the vehicle to your lot Step one is auto transport in the Carcata software. That's going to be awesome. We're going to see and learn more about that live on auto transport Intel on the car shipping business channel. By the way, did you see what time it is? What did I say? Let's go back to that. I said at 40 minutes, it'll be Peter Nogallo. What time is it? It's 840. That means it's time. So here's what I got to do. 
After this video, watch this. After this video, we're going to be live with Peter Nogallo, and we're going to learn more about ARI, fleet management. You aren't going to want to miss it. In 2013, the massive container ship Majestic Maersk was launched. The length of its huge anchor chain each weigh over 500 pounds. Shipping fleets may need chains that heavy, but when it comes to your fleet, a small, nimble chain can actually make you stronger. The customer was a Fortune 100 company with thousands of fleet vehicles, many specially designed to install and service the company's product. After a lengthy bid process to find a fleet partner that could meet their complex needs, they made the switch to ARI. The team, a collaboration between ARI, the Auto Truck Group, and Cargo Master, began by focusing on the customer's supply chain. Their analysis revealed that right-sizing vehicle components would significantly lower total cost of ownership by reducing acquisition, upfitting, and maintenance costs. It also showed that a smaller streamlined supply chain would let them leverage their buying power for more competitive pricing and improve on-time deliveries. This integration also reduced the number of touch points the fleet manager had to handle, which provided better visibility and control, as well as administrative and lead time savings. And the reaction to this nimble new chain? Through component right sizing, competitive pricing, and streamlined logistics, the fleet saved nearly $4,000 per vehicle over the previous year. For a fleet of their size, this translated into millions of dollars of savings that will add up year over year. Fleets like yours are changing. It's a new world, and they're embracing the power of data to move forward. Are you still chained to the past? Remember, your fleet is an investment, and it's time it paid off. ARI has more ways to help you do that than anyone. So this is the ARI Fleet Management with Black Book Show. And um, I believe Peter is ready in the Zoom meeting room. Um, so here we go. You guys ready? Here we go. Let's meet Peter Nogallo of ARI. Peter, can you see me and hear me okay? I can see you and hear you great, Jay. Thanks. All right, great. I'm going to raise your volume a little bit. Um, and uh, please do say hello. Introduce yourself to the Auto Transport Intel audience, and let's talk more about what ARI is and does. Yeah, absolutely. I'm so excited to be here. I, I thought, oh, it's going to be like... 9 o'clock Eastern, I'm going to be tired, but you have an exciting show, Jay. You literally have bells and whistles and all of that, so I'm very, very excited to, to be talking to you and to be telling you a little bit about ARI and Holman, but also just talk about the fleet management industry in general, because I think you may have questions, and I'm sure a lot of your viewers probably engage with fleet management companies. So just to kind of share with you, um, uh, ARI is a fleet management company. We operate in Canada, the United States, Mexico, UK, and, uh, and Europe. Um, and we're really, um, we're part of Holman Enterprises. And Holman Enterprises is a family owned um, group that has a number of automotive related businesses. So ARI, we have an upfit company with eight locations. We manufacture tr uh, radders and lacks, uh, sorry, and racks and install them for, for work trucks. We have a parts distribution company that uh, picks up OE parts and, and brings them um, drive trains, power trains, that sort of thing. Um, we have an insurance arm for commercial vehicle insurance. Uh, and then a, a big, big chunk of what Holman does is, um, is automotive retailing. So we have, I guess, oh, about almost, almost 40 stores, in the, you know, about 39 stores representing 21 brands, anything from a Honda, Toyota, many literally all the way to a, um, to a Rolls Royce, Bentley and Bugatti. So kind of the whole gamut. So it's really a kind of a full service, if you will, automotive services company. So, um, you know what I want to do too is also, I just realized, so I've got this, um, I've got this PDF that you shared with me. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. So now we can see it on screen there. So, okay. Yeah. Holman Enterprises. I mean, this is a big company. ARI is just one part of Holman. Is that right? Yep. Yep. ARI is a, a large part of Holman, but definitely we have a, a, a number of other uh, ancillary and related businesses for sure. Okay. So, and that's the, I mean, that's the size. And you said, what was the year? 
that the Holman began? Uh, literally, we started it? with one Ford store in South Jersey in 1928. Called wow. Ford. Yeah, so we're all, all pushing 100 years and still family owned. Wow. Okay, wow. And so then here's this other slide you sent me. So yeah, okay. Okay, what, over 1.7 million vehicles managed in North America. Yeah, over so that, that's anything from, you know, uh, vehicles that support railroads, uh, couriers, um, telecommunications, pharmaceutical companies. I mean, just really pretty much every vertical. So, and then, like, so, okay, the get, that gets into it. I, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the website because that was one of the ways I was able to begin to put my arms around all of the things that uh, that ARI does. Let me bring this website up here. Okay, so you go to you go to arifleet.com, right? Yep. Yep. That's the website. And then I can click on, like, services, right? right. Just this drop-down right here stopped me in my tracks <laughs> for quite a while. Yeah, I always say to people... Um, you know, sometimes it's kind of hard to explain to people. And so, I mean, you're at a cocktail party or whatever, a networking event. They're like, well, what do you guys do? And I'm like, okay, so like anything you do for your own car, you know, you finance it, you buy it, you repair it, you fuel it. Um, if you get in a collision, you, you have to fix it. And then eventually you're going to have to sell it on. We do that, you know, as we said, times 1.7 million. So I was telling this one guy that one time, and he looks at me like I'm like, Four, and he's like, like fleet management? I'm like, yeah, exactly, exactly like fleet management. Most people don't know what that is. So that's why I kind of simplify it for people. But of course, we have our big, big thing that we offer a lot of customers now is really technology, right? So if you have 500, 5,000, in some cases, fleets up to almost 50,000, uh, and you're, they're operating, and they're going to garages all over the continent, and they're getting repairs, and they want a universal fuel card, and they want to have, they have telematics devices installed, and there's literally thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of data lines that are just pinging by, by the minute. Th there need systems to support that. And then that, those systems need to start providing insights to people. And really, it, it's just such a gargantuan job that really we have to provide you know, knowledge and wisdom from all of that. So technology is huge. And well, yeah. and so so it, to relate to it, just like the right the guy at the party that was asking you questions to relate to that. So I know, like, okay, as a dispatcher, be working for carriers, and I might book some vehicles that are AT and T U bodies. So there's so there we go. I think we're beginning a connection there. So AT and T, obviously, giant company with a lot of work vehicles, but automotive isn't their core business. So they work with a fleet management company that helps them literally do everything, right? Acquire inventory, maybe sell off inventory, upgrade, et cetera. Insurance. That's, and this is where you come in. So here I am. I'm at the party. I'm talking to you. Help me understand what else you're doing for this company in this situation, all these, you know, the minutiae and the details. Sure. And I think the, the telecom example is a really good one because they have... This is where we kind of specialize in, in complex fleets, right? We, we, do, we service a lot of, you know, minivans, and, and I don't, there, there are fewer and fewer passenger cars around these days, but we do, we do do that, the typical sales fleet. But really, um, it's that sort of complex fleet and, and what it means to spe specify and, de and design those vehicles. Um, we order them from the factory, and, then they, and this is where, you, where your audience comes in, and they go, as they very well know, they go from the factory and they get shipped to an upfitter to put all the installations on the chassis, um, whatever, you know, a, a lift truck or PTO or all those sorts of things. We have, a, like I said, a secondary company that does that. But of course, we work with other companies all over who support that. Uh, then again, it goes on the transport and, and it gets shipped to the end user. Um, and then, you know, they have the vehicle, they put it to their drivers, they get a fuel card that we support, they get maintenance services that we support. That vehicle needs to go in for preventative maintenance. They go to one of our hundreds of thousands of, of uh, network of vendors, suppliers across the continent. Um, and they get consolidated billing. Similarly, if they have you know, an unexpected repair, they call our 24-7 call center and say, listen, I broke down in northern Alberta. 
uh, it's minus 30 degrees, what are you going to do for me? Uh, and then we would dispatch and, and bring them to one of our repair facilities, get them back on the road, get them into a rental. Um, and, and really, that's a lot of what we do. We, we do, of course, licensing. Uh, and I was so interested to see your DOT compliance because that is a perennial sort of challenge for our customers. Um, and so we, especially with new ELD mandates coming in, so we do a lot of that compliance work for them. Um, we, hold their, they, we hold their titles in a vault. Um, literally, um, we do safety training for their drivers, online safety training. We, we manage collision repairs. We, we do subrogation. And what that means is if you know, we go up, we help, if there's an at-fault accident, we help you know, secure the, the monies from the other person's insurance company. Uh, and then, of course, and Mike's going to talk about this in great, great detail is really about remarketing and asset management. And of course, I left this part out. I hope no one at work is watching because we, of course, fund these vehicles, which is a critical component. Um, because as you say, these big companies don't want to have their capital, which could be generating returns for their shareholders, stuck in a bunch of vehicles, right? So, You know, that that's really interesting too because I'm having many thoughts thinking about the, the massive operation. And you mentioned, and I know Mike had talked to me about this, okay, Holman goes back, that's almost 100 years now, and throughout that time, as the industry grows, as these businesses grow, I mean, you just keep setting up more and more departments to handle all the various functions, and then, yeah, the financial component, man, that's so that's got to be huge, and I obviously don't want to be too invasive, but when you think of all the verticals just within your company, it must be massive. You have a massive company? Uh, we have a large company. There's definitely it's supported on both sides between the dealerships and you know, the, the fleet services side. It's about six thousand employees. Okay, that's yeah. pretty big. So it's a yeah. big company. It's yeah. funny that you mentioned kind of that history because you, you got that history so quick. We literally started the ARI side, the fleet management, uh, in 1948 out of Camden, New Jersey. The RCA Victor, if anyone remembers that, if anyone is old enough to remember that, they wanted to have trucks, but they didn't want to own them, and Ford went to the dealership, to, the, to the, the founder of our company and said, hey, what can you do for these trucks? And that was our, that foray into fleet management um, all that year, all that time ago, right after the war. So. Um, and then also when you were talking about upfitters, that is, so in auto transport as a dispatcher, and I don't dispatch anymore, but I'll, I'll never forget it. And that's why I do a show on Thursdays about it. It's pretty hard managing all the logistics and trying to trying to keep carriers loaded off of load boards. But upfitters, I always found that to be a desirable load to get. Um, it pays pretty well. It seems really consistent. Um, there are some upfitters that are still just cranking out. The brain. So you got the transport to the location, and then you got the transport out of the location. These are great contracts, great for carriers. It's ongoing business. It seems nonstop. And that's not just not just lifted trucks and not just toolboxes, but also like handicap conversion minivans. I mean, there are so many different types of upfitting out there. Um, and then so to be the manager of that tranche, I call it a tranche because it just seems it seems massive. I, I, yeah, I, and I'm kind of stunned. It's interesting. I think I, I didn't even think about it from that perspective, right? So I, I can definitely see where it would be nice, consistent businesses because on the fleet management side, we know that we're ordering a thousand, you know, sort of telecom trucks for a major customer. We know where they're going. Other another company that we own is called the Auto Truck Group, and they, they have locations in Kansas City. They have one down in South Carolina by the new Sprinter sort of plant. So we put the plants, our upfitting plants, beside. You know the OE, um, and so that they do that transport, and then we, we get them on. Sometimes you, your your um, viewers would, would bring them to rail, I assume, and get them on those rail cards if they're going from Kansas City to California, what have you. Uh, so it's definitely an integral integral part, and I'll tell you that it's it's a real linchpin, and of what we call that supply chain, right? And and the, your viewers are so important in that because, well, as you kind of animated, it's like where is my vehicle, right? And I always say there is. There's sometimes a bit of a black hole between the leaves, the OE, and it goes to the upfitter, and we're trying to provide visibility to that. And that's that's really been a perennial issue for this industry, to be completely frank with you. So, yeah, well, and that's where a lot of we've seen in the past several years, and it, 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 finally a major advancement in technology in auto transport, 
Um, but uh, now we're seeing, I, and that's why I call it the year of the hybrid also, we're seeing a lot of that integration between all the different service providers to make sure ultimately that the client and the customer and the shipper knows what's going on and gets gets what they gets what they're looking for when they want it when they're expecting it and um and yeah i mean there's just so i, I don't even know technologically there's i there's many questions i could ask but i'm trying to stay with an overview that's really our objective here is yep. just to look at from an overview all the things that a fleet management company does and for transport businesses to understand that uh yeah, now, you know, now that you know that you're doing some of these types of business, here's who's behind the curtain. Yeah, and it's also a, a huge service component, right? In many, many cases, these vehicles are, are going to drivers, um, and sometimes they're, you're delivering an E-Class Mercedes to, to the CEO of a company. So it's a very high-touch touch experience that we have to kind of work on. We work with delivering dealers to do all that. You know, they go pick up, they drop off the car at one dealer. One of your guys will come pick it up, bring it to an auction. Mike will get into that. Um, but it, it's a huge, huge service component too because those driver relationships are very, very important too, right? So, and drivers, understandably, are incredibly protective of their vehicles, right? <laughs> exactly. Well, and that's another interesting point is that, and when we bring in Mike, is that all, a, a vehicle can is doesn't just go from A to B. A to B to C to D to E to F. I mean, you've got all the different things that need to get done, whether there's title and registration, whether it needs to be stored, whether it needs to be worked on. There's many different variations. And again, as a fleet management company, you're able to manage the entire umbrella of, I don't know, what do you need done? What, what and, and you know, here's something else that I was thinking about is that... Um, I, I don't like to mention companies specifically, but what popped to my mind was Google. Somebody, like that kind of company, somebody must have said, you know, we're going to need an army of trucks or vans. We're not sure. Can you help us figure out, based on what we're going to tell you it needs to do, help us figure out what we should get, right? And so that kind of consulting comes into play? Hugely, right? And that's what we, we t often talk about, more and more so now. We're not talking about cost. We're talking about our collective competencies, right? So, if, and this is such a big, big thing, especially now with the pandemic. Like it, you, this last mile fleet. It's just who thought about a last mile fleet? You thought about a FedEx of the world. You thought about you know the DHLs and the whatnot. But this last mile fleet is just it comes so important. There's small operators who want to do it, but it's not just buying a vehicle. It's upfitting them with special delivery shelving units to put in with pullout shelves so they can be more and more and more efficient. As we're all waiting for 24-hour delivery. I I mean, it's got to come from somewhere. You may not think about it when you go to the driveway, but it's an, it, I wouldn't say it's a new industry, but it's one that's been completely revolutionized in the last you know, three to five years. Right, so with all the changes happening, um, the good news is you've got your work cut out for you. I mean, right, it's, you have to not only keep up with all the changes and, then, and learn and adapt, but then how to consult the best way to go given those changes. Here's what we're going to do. This is really... Uh, this is awesome stuff. I tell you what, I'm going to put pause on that. Sure. Um, I'm, we're in the live chat. I'm going to look at the live chat for a second. And while I'm doing that, what I'm going to do is um, uh, I'm going to bring in, I think it's time to bring in Paul and Josh. So Paul Machine and Josh, get ready to join us here. And in the live chat, I saw a few things. Um, I saw Mike and Paul and Paul and Ty talking. I wonder if you guys could fill me in on what are we connecting? I see connections happening in the live chat, and I when I see that, I like it. Because that is one of the functions of not only is Auto Transport Intel an education platform, but um, networking is a really big, it's not only a really big deal, you know that, but we can't go to physical trade shows. Connecting online is one of the best ways to, uh, to meet educate share etc and as we were talking about live on cars on the move last friday with christopher ludwig at automotive logistics is that in this new era of everything being online we can we can we can get information we can watch a video or you know be you know join a live webinar but how do we network how do we connect with other people during the information 
And so um, I really like the live chat component for that. Uh, and I want to I want to keep finding ways to 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 grow that because I know like well, I'm watching live webinars and then I you know what I do I find out who's there and I go to LinkedIn and connect on LinkedIn and so I'm not even connecting through the platform from which I got the information and I just find that so interesting but um, having said that, and thank you guys so much for, for tuning into the live chat. Again, Mark and Ty for your participation and support. I really, really appreciate that. So we're at 9 o'clock. It's 9 o'clock right now. The timing couldn't be better because now with us we have we have Paul Machine from Black Book. We have Josh Giles from Black Book. And still with us is Peter Nogallo from ARI. So, Paul and Josh, we'll start with Paul. Paul, can you see me and hear me okay? I can hear you wonderful, Jay. How are you, sir? I'm great, man. Thank you so much. How are you Absolutely. doing? Absolutely. Amazing. Brother Peter, good to see you, sir. Josh, thank you for joining. <laughs> you know, I, I warned Josh. This is Josh. Josh, we started at 8 p.m. Central. <laughs> He's like, oh, oh okay. <laughs> Right, right, and then, he, and then he doesn't let you go, and he just keeps on talking. So, yeah. I wanted to, let me introduce Josh, please, yeah, to please. the audience. He's a, a new guest this evening. He's our principal analyst for basically our industry that we're discussing today, medium and heavy-duty trucks. His, his hardcore specialty, he's amazing at what he does. And uh, Josh, I want to introduce you formally to everyone else. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. This is a, a, a great show so far. I've learned so much. So, um, so thanks. <laughs> All right. You know, Josh, listen, I know, and like we just, I, I say to this, because I know it's, we just, we throw you right in. Isn't it interesting how live feels different? We all do Zoom meetings all the time. But when we're live, I still, I get kind of worked up at a quarter till. The energy that this, 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 this show has is amazing. You know, I was I was probably ready to go to bed around 5 30, 6 o'clock, and now here we are. It's like I just had a cup of coffee. So awesome. ATI like a cup of coffee. I love that. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so I have a copy of some slides, but I think that do you want to take it away? Do you want to give a bit of a black book update? Let's see here. And I think Paul might be. Oh, there we go. Cool. And Paul, I didn't hear you. And I don't think I hit mute. And I don't think you did either. So we see it, but we lost your audio for a second. And I'm not sure. Check, check. If I need to go through the, uh, just through the slides, I can do that, Paul, while you figure this out um, on your end. Okay, perfect. Yeah, uh, we hear you fine, Josh. Thank you. Good deal. Well, um, and, and Paul, you can switch from this one. This is just the introduction. Um, so really what we were talking about or we were planning to talk about here was um, where do we feel like truck prices are headed? So um, really to understand where truck prices are headed, we need to look at where they have been. Um, Heading into uh, 2020, um, there were a lot of units in the used marketplace. So we saw a lot of depreciation in 2019 headed into 2020. And as we, uh, in December of 19, um, overall prices started to level off a bit and then headed into 2020, the prices were pretty stable. Um, and then, um, Paul, if you could go to the next slide. So here you can see where the, the um, we were pretty stable from, I guess, February of 20 through May of 20. But the, um, really what was happening was, of course, COVID shut produ uh, production down for everyone. Um, there was just not a lot of supply out there from what we were seeing, not only on retail, but wholesale as well. So um, we were seeing um, heading into 20, 2020, we were seeing very stable and then the market kind of took a dip when um, the COVID, um, the outbreak started. And then um, really we were seeing a little bit of stable stabilization and that was really due to um, supply um, 
and um, production issues that they were having. So heading into the next slide, this, um, this data here just shows um, really by uh, segment. So we've got construction trucks, which are our dumps, our vocational units, our straight trucks. We've got the over the road units, which is our sleeper trucks. And then the regional tractors are our day cabs. And this is just trend lines of what we've been seeing and how stable things were up until pretty much um, the beginning of COVID. You can see how construction trucks stayed um, stable, whereas um, over the road and regional tractors took a dip. And we've seen some volatility in that market based off of really just supply and demand. It's just it's simple supply and demand. Um, and then um, if you can, if you see, it looks like in between, um, I believe it was in um, August time frame, we saw the prices um, really pick up and that was due to um, a lot of you know, supply issues. There was really nothing in the marketplace anywhere. Um, a lot of the trucks that we were seeing were um, had, had higher mileage. They, um, in many ways, they were kind of beat. Um, the, uh, the remarketing was not, uh, the, the units that we saw remarketed was not near as strong as what we were seeing years past. And then I think our next slide is really dipping into the medium and heavy duty units. So this shows more about how our adjustments were for medium duty units um, through all of 19. And you can see the huge uh, depreciation there. And then the beginning of the year, the values were pretty stable until really um, it looks like in April or May time frame, the values started to take a dip. And I think in many ways, a lot of that was um, I think some there was some market corrections there. There was a lot of, um, I think there were a lot of box trucks in that time period that were possibly causing the units to go down there. And then we saw a, uh, really it was just uh, supply was not there and it um, really uh, caused prices to increase heading into the fall of this year on, on medium duty trucks. So Paul, if you'll head to the next slide. And then this one is speaking in uh, classes. So we've got, there, there's box trucks in every class, but really in class four and class five um, is where we see them. Half of class five, I believe, are mostly straight uh, um, straight trucks. And then class six, we're getting up into some larger straight trucks and box trucks. Um, and really you see a lot of similar depreciation here from what we've already been showing. Um, where the, the majority of 2020 was pretty stable. And then we started seeing things kind of dip a bit, but really prices have increased. I was working on my book this morning um, and then actually I'll be working on it again this, tonight. We're gonna go to publish tomorrow um, and values are creeping up. So, um, and, and these charts show our adjustments. So it's not values, it's how much we are adjusting the vehicles. And you can see that really in all of 2019, all of our values are being brought down, um, whereas half of 2020 or the majority of 2020 values were kind of increasing from what we've seen prior periods. And then as you guys were talking about earlier, we were talking about all of the electronics and everything that are going into um, the, the equipment that's, um, that's being brought to market. This kind of shows you, it's a rolling trend of a, um, it's 10 to uh, three year old units. And it shows you how expensive they have gotten over the past decade. And um, I don't have my notes in front of me, Paul, but it's, um, I want to say, say that, you? yeah, I can hear you now. Perfect, I was able to fix it. So, no, you're fine, welcome back. Um, thank you, sir. I want to so, say that it was an average of 5.6% um, per year um, if you took an average of, of what the prices of a unit have increased. So it really just goes to show you how expensive equipment has become over the years. And we would say, I would also add to that, uh, but not knowing all the details that the that price increase also is shows the increase in technology that's being leveraged in those units as well. Mm -hmm. And then heading into, is there a, what's the next slide got on it? This one here is our retail sales trends. So this really just, this um, this helps us understand production. 
So, um, you know, we all know that uh, COVID pretty much shut down production for almost two months or more for, for, for many OEMs. And uh, they've been fighting to try and, and bring, um, you know, increase production as safely as possible. But really, they just have not, um, and as to no fault of their own, but they're not um, producing as many as the market needs. So we've, um, we've seen here, you can see that the retail sales trend started taking a, a deep dive um, really in the beginning of January. And then once COVID hit in March, I, I don't have the percentages in front of me, but, but it took a large dive um, until basically about the May timeframe when things were starting to pick up just a bit. And um, overall, um, I believe it took a, a bit of a dip heading into the end of this year, which is, is, is normal. But um, what really we're not expecting um, from the conversations that I've had with OEMs and, uh, and remarketers, we're not expecting to have um, production until probably the, uh, the middle to latter part of Q3 of, of this year. So we're going to see a lot of stable prices on medium duty trucks and heavy duty trucks um, for probably the next eight to, 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 to 14 months. I would also add to that that we you'll also see the same thing on the light duty truck side, where we've seen that the the overall um, light vehicle class category has been buoyed by the uh, the retention of resale value on the light duty trucks, things like that, the the 1500 series, the F-150s, the all the way to the 350s. They've really that class category of vehicles really held the line uh, in the automotive vertical vertical and. It, and there was a, a few months where they, rare in the industry, we actually saw an increase in valuation from month to month, uh, which is like almost unheard of in the car business. Yeah, I don't have my notes in. I don't have my notes in front of me, but I, um, I believe that we were somewhere around eighteen to nineteen weeks um, of um, of continuous increases in wholesale prices on the light duty side. Um, and then here recently, full-size pickup trucks and then um, full-size um, SUVs have really stabilized an increase in price. Um, 2,500 and 3,500 uh, size units, they're, they're just not, the production is not there. They're not building enough units. So um, I think that it's going to be a while before we see the incentives that we used to and see on, on some of these newer uh, new units. Yeah, like, like Peter was talking about earlier, he was talking about the semi, he was hearing semiconductors on our end, we're not only hearing semiconductors, we're, we're hearing yeah, the steel processing, you know, not getting enough steel to manufacture the bodies they need to make. We're also hearing microchip, microprocessors are becoming a challenge. Uh, so that upstream environment for the supply chain, I think is gonna be very compressed, at least for the first six to nine months of this year, uh, which on the flip side of things, those off-lease vehicles that are coming out, will we'll, they'll see uh, an increase in value, especially if they're in better condition than average, those kinds of vehicles, when you have that market. And that's what we saw um, in the light duty vehicle side of the business. When the supply chain of new vehicles being, being manufactured was shut down, there was a oversupply of used vehicles in the first four months of the year. Then as the markets opened up, they started selling quickly uh, because of the, the, the suppressed demand and low new vehicle inventory. By the summertime, we were seeing people at auctions, both online and physical auctions, paying way more than they should have been paying for those vehicles at the time. Uh, Absolutely. And, right? But we've, right, we've you know, seen, Go ahead, I was going to say that we've seen, uh, especially in full-size trucks and full-size SUVs, a lot of them have been redesigned um, over the past couple of years, so you've got fresh product coming out. Um, and, and really, they uh, it, it has just caused um, prices to, to really, really increase. We've seen some models as much as thirty-five to fifty-five hundred dollars um, uh, increase over um, over the summer. So, um, ending the year, uh, our values overall are much higher than what they should be. Um, so, um, it's going to be year. interesting to see. Absolutely, absolutely. So, what does that mean for companies like like ARI? It's a great opportunity to offload older units. Talk to your clients right now to start engaging them to replace their current, their, their older units to get some newer ones that they might be able to take advantage of some, some sales because of the, the supply versus demand issue. 
their used vehicles have a higher retention in value, and that can be applied towards the purchase of upgrading their inventory, the current new stock of, of inventory. Yeah, and, and, and prices are increasing, and at the same time, used mileage is increasing as well. So that goes to play in, in what we're doing. I mean, a lot of uh, fleet companies are having to keep units in service longer than what they were um, initially thinking. So that's going to uh, cause a lot of the units that we're going to see over the next two to three years, is going to they're going to have higher mileage um, than what we have uh, been seeing over the past couple of years, I believe. Well, listen, I, if I can add to that, as you guys were saying, a historically high resale value coupled with a historically low interest rate environment is really an opportune time to refresh, to refresh my fleet and to monetize those assets. Sorry Absolutely. to interrupt. Absolutely. Yeah. No, 100%. No. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it, any, any company that's, that has an older fleet and that says, you know, we need, really need to hold on, they're missing the bandwagon right now. They need to be jumping on board to take advantage of both of those those business sets for them, you know. And then on the flip side of that, the service side. Let's talk about the service side for a second. Um, it, the new car manufacturer, new car retailers, last last year wrote um, 150 some month million service ROs, repair and parts ROs. I don't know what the number is on the fleet side of the business, but if if, if it's any indicator, I'm probably saying it's, it's just as high, if not higher. That equated to almost fifty-one billion in in service dollars, in parts dollars that was revenated, re generated specifically for the the new car market, the new franchise dealer. And I can see that those companies that have those older fleets that are are not able to take advantage are going to want to do the services required to continue getting more mileage out of their vehicles. And so that's another great opportunity for this for the business that's here. And there are service operators are out, out right now that are asking the question, how can I get a bigger piece of the pie from the factory dealer and service them myself? Tremendous opportunity all the way around. I Josh, took I'm sorry, I took away this I took away the sharing. You can take it back if you want to. I just I wanted to zone in on what Paul was talking about because that is Right, that if you, if you own a fleet right now and you're trying to make a decision financially, this is some really great information. Mm -hmm. or, if you serve, or if you're servicing them, right? If you're transporting, and this is a very active time, right? Um, you know, we are advisor and customers. You know, look, get rid of those. Un, the, the, frankly, those older assets they get less use, and the, these assets in our business are only as good as the work they produce you know, economically. So they're unloved, they have higher maintenance, and they, they are used less. They have less mileage because nobody wants it. They're gonna go, if there's a yard, they're gonna go grab the new one, right? So I always say, get rid of the unloved, unloved assets uh, and, and try to refresh as best you can because a lot of fleet operators keep spares around and they're very territorial and they have yards and they have, what happens if one goes down? Like, we'll take care of it. Well, just get rid of them, right, so. Um, in the live chat, while while I'm pointing this out, I'm going to bring in, uh, I'll send the invite to Mike here. But um, Ty is picking his jaw up off the floor. So that's happening live on Auto Transport Intel. That's pretty cool. Thank you so much for that, Ty. You know, um, yeah, I, I, I like it. When, sometimes when I see, like, the chat go silent, it's because, like me, we're absorbing so much information. Let me ask this, Josh, did you have more slides you wanted to talk about is there did you want to finish that up is there i didn't know if there was more or not no i mean it's uh, i believe that that was pretty much it um i hope that uh i i didn't have my notes in front of me for all the slides i hope that i believe that i caught all of the major keys uh key elements there so um i think so we're Jay, good that. Okay. yeah ty is the guru of all things medium and heavy duty trucks for blackwood I mean, when you when you're when anyone in the market is looking at valuations and short and short term and long term forecasts for residual values and market market reports, Josh is the guy. He's the guy to be asking those questions to. Awesome. The, the work that Blackbook does uh, is so critical because you're trying to predict, and uh, frankly, the highest cost about the highest uh, cost of operating a fleet is depreciation, just as you are your own car. 
soon as you drive it off the lot, there you go. We know that, that antidote. So trying to, to, to figure out what an asset, especially a heavy asset is in three to five years, I always call it like an alchemy or a black magic. So black book is good at the black magic because you can get burned. If something happens to that market in three to five years, you can get burned, right? So. So there works oh, incredibly gosh, I'm important. Get you a, I'm getting you a wizard hat now. I mean, that's <laughs> perfect, Peter. I'm getting you a wizard hat the next time I see you. <laughs> that is too much credit. We have a, we have a wonderful team. <laughs> that is a great idea. Um, okay, ladies and gentlemen, we do have Mike Buchanan here with us. Mike, uh, you were the link, and you were instrumental in helping me put this show together. So please do say hello to the live audience and tell us a little bit more about yourself. Yeah, definitely. Real quick, I, I was going to come talk uh, politics and weather, so I don't have anything prepared uh, li like uh, Josh and Paul do. So I'm going to do my best throughout this whole thing. But uh, hey, everybody, thank you very much for allowing me to, to join this. I'm uh, very, very, very excited not only to talk to, to BlackBook, who you know makes my job easy by being able to talk to various fleets throughout the United States and Canada, but also Jay for putting this all together. Unbelievable platform watch. Uh, definitely not enough of your shows, uh, but I love how you continuously expand and bring it in more and more audiences. Because like Peter said, from an ARI standpoint, we have so many different verticals. And while me specifically and what my role is, is so unique and so specific with just one little aspect uh, of the disposition side of these, these uh, the units our clients are looking to sell, it's very similar to what you've been trying to do with your YouTube channel. Just making sure that everybody understands that logistics is not just about moving one car to one place. There's so many other things that are involved. So thank you very much for giving us this platform. But uh, yeah, real quick, my role specifically with ARI is to help fleets discover what the best remarketing product is to sell their used fleet vehicles and equipment. Um, I was brought on board to ARI about five years ago to really understand and, and help our clients create a marketing strategy that gets them the solutions that they're looking for, which could be the fastest days to sell or what we've been talking about, the highest returns. And, you know, a, a great example, Paul and Josh, you guys are harping on making sure clients understand when to take advantage of such a hot market. That was something I was talking about through 2020. While there were some downturns and you guys had plenty of graphs to show, hey, unfortunately, there was some uncertainty and some clients needed to liquidate assets for cash relatively quickly. There's also that conversation, as Peter mentioned, that underutilization of those assets mm -hmm. and say, hey, look, hey, this is data from BlackBook, one of the most respected organizations that is, that is sharing data of what's happening in the marketplace. Hey, fleet clients, now's the time to take advantage of this hot resale market. 100% true. Makes sense why you all would, uh, yeah, be so tight because, right, the data reflects the science and then there now you can really advise knowing what's around the corner, right? You got to be able to see around the bend. Absolutely. I never want to start a conversation with, hey, trust me, because everybody in this chat is not going to trust me. But if I go, hey, take a look at what BlackBook is saying. And this is where, Jay, this is where we got connected. You know, I wanted to put myself out there. We're living in a virtual world. I was, I was sharing BlackBook updates for years via email, just sending them as a PDF. But by being able to have a brief conversation, one or two minutes, to talk about something that's very specific, especially that, that how it relates to our fleet management clients, hey, pickup truck values are soaring. Now is the time. Hey, van prices, as Peter mentioned, we have a lot of telecom clients. Van prices are, are plummeting. You know, maybe let, let's not take them to market today. But having that conversation and using their data to tell the story, it, it, it makes my job, like I said, so much easier. You know, we're humbled by that. You know, we're, we're unfettered. We're not connected to any option provider in the market. We are, we're outside the spectrum. We only record and report what we see and hear and the feedback from our dealer groups and our buyers. So mm -hmm. it's very humbling to hear you say that, and we, are, we appreciate that. And, and again, I, I give the kudos to, people, to team members like Josh. Josh, Josh is, he lives and breathes this kind of data. And he, he gets spreadsheets of all the, <laughs> all the data. And there are times I'm, I've walked by his office, and he's like this to his screen, you know, analyzing stuff that you and I can make it actionable for our, for our clients. 
100%. And Paul, I don't know what took you so long to get us connected to Josh, but uh, yeah, I might be emailing him more than you. <laughs> well, I'm, gra I'm glad to be a part of the conversation now, guys. Yes, absolutely. So we're oh, here, okay. we're live. Yeah, what's, okay, let's, let's pretend the cameras aren't there, okay? What is something, let's try, I want to try to, I want to try and, you know, I want to tap right into a live Zoom meeting that you might have, where I know we're live on YouTube, but what, what's something you might be talking about right now? Yeah, definitely. That, and that's a great question. And, and like I mentioned earlier, each fleet is a little bit different in, in what they're trying to do. And not only from a success standpoint, but as Peter mentioned, and the screen you showed about the different industries that ARI touches, they all have different types of assets. So one of the things I always open up with is, uh, you know, what's on my shirt. So it, ARI's Remarketing Solutions, that, that's the name of the department that I work for. And what I really want to emphasize is th there's no one size fits all just like your carriers they're going to have all sorts of different trucks they're going to have all sorts of different routes dealerships wholesale so so they're moving vehicles and equipment various different ways well we're selling them various different ways and depending on what types of assets and what success looks like we're making that happen because as you identified early on their core business has zero to do with diversifying through auction channels are worrying about what the what the estimated black book price is going to be for this. So I really start out trying to learn a little bit more about what their fleet is and what they're looking to accomplish. But the story I share is, like I mentioned, the remarketing solutions and talk about the evolution of what that looks like. So traditionally, when you think of a fleet management company, you think, oh, they're just selling a bunch of vehicles at the physical auction. And while that's true to a point, you know, you even mentioned earlier how important the virtual spectrum is. And it has to do with everything. Well, from an ARI standpoint, every single one of our units is also represented in virtual markets. And I mentioned one of them in your chat earlier, ARI has proprietary virtual networks, where all of us at the end of the, today's call could go on that virtual network, see the units for sale, and congratulations, we could start a transaction tonight. And that's the way the industry is going. And it doesn't matter if it's our proprietary website or some of the auction partners that even Paul is working with. So from there, we, we dive into some of the other solutions that ARI is offering. As I mentioned from uh, this year, or excuse me, last year in 2020, 2020 was somewhat difficult for many industries where they needed to turn their assets into cash. Well, we have programs where we can buy these units directly from them. And transporters, please don't get mad at me. We, we, we started a program where we could help our clients sell units where they sit. So they don't need to pay the logistics fee of taking it to auction and then the buyer picks it up from auction and takes it to their location. So we created a virtual auction specific for, for equipment. So again, helping our clients diversify and get the unit sold uh, to the best of their abilities and, and based on how they help, how they define success. Yeah, I'm pulling it up here. So there it is, ariautodirect.com. -A -A yeah, so every single one of our units that, that, are, that is ready for disposition are located on this site. Uh, and you can easily search it out and, and see what's available uh, for purchase. So, okay. You got some light, light duty vehicles there. Uh, yeah, you know, from a fleet management company, as, as Peter mentioned, we're, we're dealing everything with, with um, anything with wheels and tracks really gets it narrowed down to. And while traditionally this is really representative of our fleet our standard fleet vehicles. Um, it, the inventory changes consistently, and, and it's something that is available for, for our fleet clients. I may need to connect you with one of my clients. They're, they're entertaining uh, short-term leasing, like three to five months for the, the, you know, the gig market, for people who want to drive mm -hmm. for Draver or drive for Uber, Lyft, or, or do delivery vehicles or drive for Amazon for six months or so. I have to connect you with someone like that. And then you're going to have to talk to me to figure out the residual values. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And Peter can talk more uh, about some of our other endeavors because, as you guys mentioned, it's not just the tactile or the administrative 
type of work that ARI is doing. It's not just the fuel cards. It's not just selling these units, but it's talking through the business intelligence and building these cases of what's the right vehicle for the right job. And, you know, mm -hmm. you talk about this gig economy, you know, I, I don't want to share too much. This wouldn't be our first time talking to clients that are looking at this. So we mm -hmm. have data and we have models that we know have worked. We also have some that we know have failed. And that's the power of ARI. It's like, look, we, we have experts. And again, like I mentioned, my role is very specific. And when, when we look, I always use this analogy. When we look at the fleet management space, I'll, I'll try to frame myself as much as possible. It's from here to here. It's from the acquisition and the funding of vehicles all the way to the disposition side. Nice. My job is that much. So when you talk about, hey, what's the residual value? What's the right asset? What's the utilization? That's where the fleet management comes into play. And it's definitely something that we could help uh, you, you with or, or anybody else with. That's awesome. Are you getting any requests or, or are, are you getting early stage conversations from fleet companies saying, you know, I want to I, I want to explore the idea of, of, con of converting my all these all gas to a hybrid hydrogen electric drivetrain. What's that conversation like for you guys? Yeah, absolutely. And to be honest, a lot of our energy and utility companies are, are pushing that envelope. And, and Peter, you know, you add a little bit more context here because my job specifically is on that remarketing side. So we are having these conversations about, you know, what is that resale value? And a, and a perfect example is, you know, alternative fuels aren't new. And some of our large clients, uh, we have a large uh, distribution client that uses all CNG or propane powered trucks. And we've had conversations about, hey, unfortunately, in some markets, that's not very desirable. You know, as Jay mentioned, congratulations, 70% of Americans still want gas or diesel powered right. vehicles. It, 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 that, there's not a switch overnight. And I know, again, not jumping into politics, that there are certain areas of the country that are trying to propel that a little bit further. And to be honest, I, I absolutely love it because I love technology. And, you know, that that's the same way with, with my kids. They, they, they love Fortnite and, and playing on every single device they could get their hands on. Right. <laughs> right. Well, here, you know, it's interesting. I was thinking about it. You know what's going to happen probably is there'll be another twist and turn in the in the story of humanity and suddenly everyone will be like oh thank goodness we have all this ev <laughs> you know if you have if you have polled people 12 years ago 75 percent of people would say they they love their blackberry until they got their iphone right yeah. and so i think what you know i was always i was a bit of a skeptical person not from a political perspective but i'm like how are these evs going to perform on a fleet world how are they going to do a job and i'm from canada originally how are they going how are, how are you going to get a heat off a battery engine when it's minus 30 celsius i mean these are things that you have to consider but the technology is, is advancing but more importantly i think we have to follow the money and there's just such a massive investment in that space right now that I, mean, I guess it could fail, but I mean, it just like every, every major player and, and all you have to do is look at the market where you're seeing people who are supporting the EV revolution, mm -hmm. the stock market, I mean, um, and, and to see where the money's flowing. So, you know, I think it's, I, I think it's sooner than we think. Yeah. Well, the, Rivian the tipping technology. point has happened, right? Yeah. The tipping point is beyond, we're beyond that now. Now, Rivian Technologies just got another, another $2.65 billion. I mean, that just blows my mind. And they, they don't even have a vehicle on the road yet. You know, think about that for a second. Yeah. There's an appetite for it. So uh, as, as early adopters to embrace those, there are 12 companies that I brief conversations through 2020 that just said, hey, we're thinking about doing a hybridization model. What do you think? You know, that are doing it now uh, or trying to get into that space. I don't know if it's out there. Um, but it might be something great for you guys. And you're going to see in the next 24 months EV pickups. And that's, to me, huge. It's a huge milestone, right? We're not talking about small, small electric vehicle cars for commuters. We're talking about pickups. So we'll, we'll watch that very closely and play in it, to be honest. That's amazing. That's exciting. Um, let's see. Okay, going back to those graphs. What, so what was going on in September, like pre-October 2020? 
Why did so many graphs follow a strange dip and and then rise? What happened? I believe that in some in 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 many ways um, we saw um, increases in value. So at the beginning of COVID, we we saw um, either stability or some things moving uh, downward, and a lot of that was due to. Um, you know, a lot, dealers not willing to pay as much as they really they used to to go to physical auctions. If you can't kick the tires, if you can't hear the engine running, um, you can't really test the truck in, in many ways. Um, they were a little weary about it, but you saw that kind of pick up. So the values kind of they, they you saw a bit of um, uh, there was some stabilization that happened. Um, really, I believe that the the market. Um, there was a lot of product at that particular time. I, I know that we're talking about how overall supply is down, and, and it was. But at that particular time, there was more than what we had seen in previous months. So if you remember my, my charts, they're not necessarily a price to where they went down and then went up. It's really the, that's the adjustment. So those that we saw negative adjustments in that time versus increases in adjustments. Uh, I'm my uh, my perception is much more uh, anecdotal than da than data driven, but uh, there was also the supply issue on the new, right? There were plant closures, and that that just stopped supply. And so, okay, we got through the worst of COVID. By the way, I still need a truck, um, and I'm not getting the deliveries are significantly delayed, as I'm sure your 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 listeners and viewers know they are what they were doing pickups at OEs, and so I think that probably and correct me if I'm wrong, guys. I think that might have had a, had a play in the values as well in the used. I, I believe it did, and then I also believe that a lot of it was um, we were all um, there's a lot of pent up demand, and um, any of the trucks that were being um, remarketed were in many ways a lot of folks were taking uh, the cream of the crop trucks that they had, and that's what they're going to retail. So the units that they went at auction with were um, were average to below average compared to what we have seen in um, you know previous uh, remarketing. So um, I think that that also plays a part. It goes to the the types of units that we were seeing um, being remarketed, um, and, and there just there were fewer uh, fewer and fewer data points uh, to drive off of um, during those times. So I know one of the things I constantly talk about with my clients has to do with the depreciation of assets because it's one big thing, especially in the fleet world, you know, maximizing your TCO or, or, or minimizing your TCO, whichever way you look at Absolutely. it. And, and one of the things that, that I always talk about is, is there's usually two things that really drive that depreciation. Obviously, it's the mileage or the utilization and then the age of that unit. And traditionally, the model year changeover is at the end of the summer, early fall. Um, is that something that is also that commonly seen with heavy duty and medium duty trucks? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, they're, they're, I, I feel like over time, we've seen a less and less of the, the, the typical model year changeover. And, um, and, and, you know, light duty, medium duty and heavy duty, we're seeing units come out as really um, as early as they can um, in some ways. Um, so uh, the, the, the typical, um, you know, refresh or model your changeover has changed over time. It really just kind of goes by the OEM and what they have, um, you know, what they have down the pipeline. But, but no, I would, I would definitely agree that you see that, um, that when, when new offerings come out, you see a, um, normally you will see a dip in, um, in pricing as soon as the new models come out. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that uh, goes to play in what you're asking about. So I was looking at some of the uh, some of the factors that are being talked about affecting moving forward uh, what could change supply and demand, right? So stimulus, tax refunds, um, springtime for dealers, traditionally helpful. New administration, interesting uh, curveball there um, and um, that 2021 should be more predictable than 2020 <laughs> one would hope and uh, and finally that it, so it, have things been currently flat week over week is that would that be the case so so what what is around the bend given some of those factors what do you <clears throat> really think 
Well, I, I think that from, from our standpoint, I don't necessarily know that things are flat. I, I, I've been working on, um, we're going to uh, publish our um, February um, wholesale prices, wholesale and retail prices for uh, medium and heavy duty trucks um, this week. So I've been, um, I've been going over all of the, um, the auction and retail data points that we have. Of course, we all know that the auctions kind of, or remarketing typically slows down um, for this industry um, in December and then January is pretty slow. Um, we've got retail uh, data points to, to, to trend off of and, and really things are increasing. And um, I believe a lot of it, or we believe a lot of it is due to the uh, low supply. So medium duty trucks are increasing. We've got, um, we are seeing uh, construction trucks um, increasing in value over the road. So we've, uh, even some of the older pro, uh, pro stars in, in Cascadia's that were that were really dropping, especially in 2019, we're seeing them actually increase. I actually raised some today, um, some 16s and 17s based off of the transactions that we've got. Um, so I think that we're going to see some increases in pricing, um, especially maybe over the next couple of months. It really just depends on what happens. Of course, we've got the administration uh, coming in, so we'll see what happens there. And then um, it really just, uh, a lot of it depends on simple supply and demand and when production is going to get back to, um, you know, uh, the levels of what, uh, you know, demand is, is at or what consumers need. So we just have to see, amazing. but I believe that, I believe that projections are, are being pushed back further and further. So I think that it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be late Q3, early Q4 before production actually gets to where it meets up with demand. Right, and we're going to see extremely high prices um, over the next probably four to six months, I believe. Do you guys have any thoughts? Yeah. I'm wondering, not in the heavy, the medium space, but do you have any thoughts on, you know, this K-shaped recovery where people, some people are, are hurting, right? And what what that may do to repos, for example, not in, in trucks, but I'm talking, in, you know, in, in lighter duty vehicles, or business travel still not recover, what that does to daily rental fleets. Do you, do you have any insight on that? I mean, uh, I know that the medium heavy are doing well, but I'm just wondering about the, the, the lighter classes. From the, the, uh, the conversations that I'm having with remarketers and, and the, like the rental car companies, um, you know, we all have to remember that prices are much stronger than really where they should be. So if you look at if you look at a car, you're probably looking at maybe, you know, $2,500 more than what it was that particular year model this time last year. If it's a truck, you're probably looking at 35, maybe $4,500 more than what that year model truck was worth last year at this time. So, um, you know, we're, we're really seeing a lot of strength there. Um, and I think that's going to impact to Josh's point and, and to your question, Peter, when the lenders have to take a look at, okay, when do, when do they decide they can no longer be empathetic they have to take a hardcore look at a toxic asset profile, right? What percentage of my portfolio is now a toxic asset? And they realize, okay, I'm, I'm already six months behind on these accounts and I can still get out of these and break even, or I might be able to make money on these. I'm going to pull the trigger, repossess that vehicle and roll forward. Uh, so we're, we're predicting about two and a half million 2.4 to two and a half million this year. Uh, a, the run of that's going to be in the, starting now through the next six months, barring any regulatory changes. That could change, right? You know, the, uh, th which would be a beautiful thing because we're in a position that's not anybody's particular fault, right? This was a forced economic shutdown that's put these people in these positions. Mm -hmm. So we're 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 hoping for a combination of three things. Um, we're looking for structured uh, trade-ins or, or buy-downs where people have the ability to try to take advantage of the increased market value for their vehicle. The lenders will share that with the customer to preserve their relationship and the, and the future credit, um, credit facility that that customer brings to a lender, right? They don't want to, they've been a good paying customer up until now, right? They were, they might have been a general manager of a movie theater chain, you know, or, or assistant manager of, of some retail shops, and they had been paying really, really well. You don't really want to discount the opportunity to care for that customer for the next three vehicles they could buy. So let's try to see if we can find ways to help them get out of this too much payment 
by restructuring their loan, taking advantage of what the market conditions are today, low interest rates, high resale value. The dealer gets a good vehicle that they want to get, and they get to resell something that's more affordable to this customer, right? And I think you said it, Peter, and I and, and Jay will tell, say this, the, the sourcing the vehicles in the future is going to be found more in the driveway and finding a way to get those vehicles from consumers that other consumers want to want to buy. That sub $10,000, sub $8,000, six to eight year old vehicle that's been cared for. I, I call it well loved, and, but, and the customer doesn't know what that vehicle's worth, but they will sell it if the price is right. There's a market for that customer now. That's, that's the first set. The second set of the customers are the ones who, have, who want to be able to try to, like a short payoff you know, short sell their vehicle just to get out of it. And then the, the last is the involuntary. Uh, and the involuntary is what we really don't want to see because that's where the most expense, the industry as a total incur, incurs to try mm -hmm. to liquidate that asset and get it back into the market. And then you've alienated a whole section of consumers. You can forget about doing business with them for the next three to four years. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's what the market's going to want. I don't think that's what the, uh, I don't think the government's going to want that. They want to stimulate the economy. They want to grow business. They're going to figure out ways to help lenders, dealers, auctions. Um, the whole gamut is going to figure out ways to be able to care for that, that, that consumer. If that makes sense. Definitely, definitely. No, I, I would agree. I mean, we're, uh, we have uh, conversations every morning with the team. And one thing that we're talking about right now is, um, is, um, is basic... Um, Oh, guys, guys, I'm so sorry. Uh, forgive me. Um, <laughs> it's late. Not so much. It, it, no, it, now, now we're getting up closer to 11 o'clock. So, um, <laughs> so with, the, with the, the, the record car business, um, you know, we have not seen the repos um, that we thought that we might see, um, especially at the end of the year and then, and then throughout this year. I guess in many ways, nobody wants to be the first. Um, right. yep. And... Um, so to your point, I feel like there are a lot of folks or a lot of companies that are working with uh, customers to try and avoid that maximum, um, you know, uh, penalty um, for, for all of us, because nobody wants that. Um, you know, hopefully everybody will, will you, know, you know, be able to pay all of their bills and, you know, everybody will be happy. But, um, mm. but that's, that's really what we're seeing. So it, I, I would imagine, and, and much to what Peter was saying, we're going to have a lot of, uh, we expect to see a lot of repos this year, but we have yet to see um, really a lot of increases. Um, you know, we see some in the auction channel, more than what we've seen previous, but um, it's really not the numbers that we were expecting to see um, as of yet. Right. Yeah, Josh, I wanted to add, so one of the things that ARI has been working on, and especially from the Remarketing Solutions product, is diversifying, just like what we're doing with the different auction channels. And one of the things that we launched was Remarketing by ARI to help financial organizations sell their repos. And this was something that was definitely a pretty big initiative going into 2020. And one of the things that we realized was, just what you just what you just mentioned. Hey, there's financial organizations that are in situations where clients are defaulting, but they don't want to repossess, and they're going to do everything that they can. and And it's one of those things that it, it's a tough conversation because they they're seeing the black book data. They're they're going, wow, these things are getting fifty percent more than they should. They're get they're getting thousands of dollars more. People are demanding because they can't buy new vehicles. But the right thing, and, and Jay, I love how you said it, you know, what would God say? What, what, what's Jesus going to think here when <laughs> oh, we talk Jesus. through, <laughs> hey, are, are we going to repossess this because we could get our money back? And, and again, that, that's something that I, I'm very fortunate that financial organizations aren't doing that kind of thing because that is the worst thing that they could possibly do. It's not about chasing the dollar. It's about doing what's right. And, you know, that, that is, and to be honest, I, I actually worked in the subprime field before coming on board to fleet. That's one of the catalysts that moved me over to fleet. Uh, th th there is a toxicity that, that kind of happens w when you're in that world. And uh, I'm very fortunate that because of coronavirus and Paul, you said it perfectly. It's not something that somebody did, but because right. it affected all of us, congratulations. We, we do have to kind of take a step back. Look how small we are in the world and say, okay, let, let's do the right thing. 
I have an expression, a rising tide raises all ships. If we all try to figure out the right way and work together to do things, uh, it benefits everyone in the long run. Oh, absolutely. Um, and I want to say that, you know, Paul, you were talking about um, the, the driveway, assets in the driveway. Paul, I just want to say that hats off to you. You said it first. You pointed it out first. I may have read articles that said it, but it didn't fully sink in until you said that. So you, you get the credit in my book. And it's, uh, you know rising tide all the ships where it's it's in the news more and more it is a growing trend and what a great way to bootstrap if you own a used vehicle yeah you can maximize your sale with some of the new technologies that allow you to be the consigner instead of getting you know getting half of what you, what it's worth to have somebody else move that vehicle so it's it's pretty awesome um, so what do we got in the live chat here? So let me bring up, I got a box on my screen and, oh yeah, good call. So let's do this. I'm going to share my screen and here is, what are we looking at here? Um, so perfect. Is, scroll, yes. scroll down to that first graph and I just want to, this is, this is the shout out that I want to give to black book. This is one of the most powerful graphs I've used all of 2020 and jay you, you you mentioned you know what are some of the things that we're looking at um you know stability um new new administration coming in stimulus funds well this talks about pretty much everything and what we used to see as normal and then what happened in, in 2020 and you know paul and josh thank you very much again for for sh sharing this data w with everybody this is available just right on your website you don't need a subscription you, you don't need to be a fleet management company that's selling ninety thousand units a year this is available to anybody that that jumps on your website mm -hmm. but right here that gray line shares what average looks like you you see an uptick of pricing which you mentioned, uh, Jay, that, that spring bump where people have tax return money in their pocket. And from 2017 to 2019, that was pretty normal. And then we saw the summer lull because people don't want to be out in car lots. They're, they're enjoying their summer vacations. And then again, another little bump in, in the fall when you know snowbirds are, are moving to warmer climates or kids are going to college. And then the standard depreciation through the end of the year. Well, the colorful lines, that's everything we saw in 2020, a, a massive dip in values that nobody w was even going to think of. A, an incredible Q1 uh, with pricing stronger than what we've seen for, for the last three years. And then the astronomic growth through the summertime because of that supply and demand challenge. And while there is still seasonal depreciation, you could see that, hey, in some months, in some weeks, it, it has even been stronger than what it's been uh, over average in the years. So yeah, I just wanted to, to, to be able to walk through this because, again, thank you very much for providing this value because it really shares how strange 2020 was from wholesale pricing. It, it was a crazy year. I remember being, uh, well, I, and, and part of my job um, is um, staying um, on top of the wholesale pricing. So I've got a, a segment. Um, I manage a team of, of analysts that, 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 that go out and, and they own their own segments, but I have a small segment. So it was really challenging to, uh, to, you know, cut vehicles as fast as they were depreciating and then raise them as fast as they were appreciation appreciating. So that's one reason why uh, Black Book, why we watch auctions in real time. And, um, you know, throughout the day, we've got a, a Slack channel and everybody's in there just pounding it all day long with, with things that they've seen um, in the in the marketplace, uh, good or bad. Um, so we're all, um, you know, we're watching auctions and adjusting our values in real time. And then we get the data comes in, of course, they come in in weekly blasts or whenever they come in. And that helps validate some of the things that we're doing. And then we can, you know, it helps fill in some of the gaps, but, but really uh, watching auctions and keeping our, um, our eyes on what's going on is really helping, you know, our customers keep, um, you know, knowing what the value of a vehicle is today and not having any lag in what the market's doing. So that's, you know, to brag on our team, that's, uh, that's one thing that we're doing. So, and I just got it. That's, that's a show right there. It's called black book, Slack channel.
All right? <laughs> and you're just bouncing around. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, that's awesome. Repo, digital auctions. Hey, Paul, did you say steel? There's a change in the steel inventory? I didn't know that. Most of the steel comes from China. I don't, I, that, that, that plays a part in, in, in future wow. um, manufacturing, lets you know a lot about what uh, what types of things may be built. Um, so we, we, uh, we look into uh, to um, the, the prices of, of different metals. Um, well, wow. I mean, and I think even uh, fortunately, the, the, this, this, this changed even before the change in administration, but the whole tariff issue played such havoc for our customers just in the, the raw materials going into vehicles, but also in aluminum going into upfitting lat ratters and racks. And it just came out of nowhere. And all of a sudden, the price of, of, of that service and goods went up 15, 20%. And, and who saw that, right? So, right. Glass. The, the, the world's number one producer of manufactured glass is China. All glass. And when you when you follow the EV circles on the battery technology, you hear them talk about Africa and then the pre different precious metals. That's mm -hmm. an interesting conversation too. Um, repo, I, you know, you talked about it. We got a repo. We're going to be talking about repo here in about what four to six Eight, weeks. Four to, yeah. Mid, mid February. So that is something to look forward to. Um, we're in the last two minutes here. I just want to mention on Friday. Ty and I are going to talk to a equipment company, and I know Ty was uh, was you know catching what you're laying down. I wonder if they're juiced into all this information. Um, I don't know if if I said truck, tractor, trailer, they're going to be live with me and Ty on Friday. So something to think about. Just want to point that out. That could be an interesting follow up. So if you're available, that's noon. Central Time on Friday. It's only a 30-minute show. This is the marathon. This is where we, you know, we exhaust all possibilities. Um, but it is a few minutes till 11 Eastern Time. You all, I want to thank you so much for your time, your contribution. It exceeded my expectations once again. Well, so, well, thank you for having everything. us. This, is, thank, this has been wonderful. It certainly has been. I'll start at the top, make it official. Peter, thank you so much. Thanks a lot, and connect with me on LinkedIn. And if you have any questions, guys, uh, we're certainly here to help. Even if you want to learn more about the Holman organization, just let, just let me know. Anything, if there's any contact info, we shared some, but um, Kimberly, go ahead and drop some of those links in the live chat. Again, we got websites, email addresses. There's also some phone numbers. Paul, thank you guys at Black Book so much for taking thank the you, time. Thank you, sir. Oh, always welcome. Enjoyed it again. Exactly. It was awesome. And Josh, thanks for your your debut appearance on the show. Please come back. Thank you. I uh, I, I hope to be back. This was this was wonderful, and I look forward to uh, to Friday's show um, uh, with uh, with the uh, transportation company. I, I'm looking forward to, to hearing what they they have to say. Yes, please yeah. do join us for that. And Mike, thank you, buddy. You know this is. It happened. I when, when was that? I I asked you. What was it November, December? It, I said, it was November. Yeah, November. The, yeah, a week before Thanksgiving. Awesome. And you know, I I it's like and Paul knows this. I just kind of go listen. Here's what I want to do. Oh yeah. <laughs> and you guys yeah, helped yeah, me make yeah, it happen. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much because vision is no good if nobody listens. No, I absolutely love it. You know, it's one of those things that, that you, you can't learn anything unless you're willing to put yourself out there. And this is a great experience, not only for myself, but, you know, one of the things I, I really, and this was a goal for 2020, that I want to continue educating. And that's why I started these videos. And, and I'm glad that those videos allowed me to grow a network where I'm able to meet you, Jay, and, and talk to the transporters that are on here and anybody else that, that is tuning in. Um, so thank you very much for the opportunity. I, I greatly appreciate it. Cool. Yeah, no, most of the audience, I'll say, I, I, I break it down this way. From what I can tell, half the audience is carriers, but the other half is brokers, dealers, services, technology, insurance, and otherwise. So anybody, if there's anything we can do, if you've got a question after the fact, if you missed asking a, sh a question in the live chat put it in the comments in the youtube comments below and i you know what and i know i'm sure i missed a question in the live chat if i missed your question live 
I apologize. Please put it in the uh, YouTube comments. I'll tap these guys on the shoulder. And again, thank you all so much for taking the time. This was an awesome show. I really appreciate it. Have a good evening. Thank Bye. you, Jay. Hi, everyone. Hey, guys. Okay, good evening, y'all. And so there it is. The meeting's over. It's it. I just let them go. I just cut them off just like that's Okay, so... Um, this was episode 173 in a row on a Tuesday night. Um, this was, uh, ARI and Black Book and love to see you guys again. Let me know if you have, um, future opportunities. I also want to thank, uh, Murphy Auto Transport. Thank you so much. We'll see you Thursday for Dispatching Live. Thank you, Superflow Systems. Thank you, Mark, in the live chat. Got his software question. Ask Mark at Superflow Systems. Thank you, Jack Cooper. Visit jackcooper.com forward slash careers. They're hiring. And I, again, thank you, Peter Nagallo. Thank you, Mike Buchanan. Thank you, Paul Machine. Thank you, Josh Giles. This was a great show. I loved it. And thank you so much for being in the live chat, participating, watching, joining us supporting the channel i really really appreciate that i can't thank you enough uh don't forget so next week next tuesday night we've got ooh home delivery anthony montero coo of draver he's a great speaker you're going to want to check that out in two weeks groundhogs roundtable that's going to be awesome and in three weeks we've got carketa if you've got an idea for the show, if you, you're like, man, I got it. I know what we need to talk about. Send me an email, autotransportintel at gmail.com. It is 10 o'clock. That's two hours. And I don't want to wear out my welcome. So thank you guys so much. Stay safe. And I'll see you soon. Peace.